In a show of hands, how many of you know what a digital nomad is? A digital nomad is a person who travels while working online. In other words, while I was, while you were uh, design, picking up your uh, background for your Zoom meetings, I actually lived in one. And I'm sure you came across all these really nice Instagram accounts of people traveling the world and showing you beautiful pictures like this from Sapa or this from Hazan. But as my grandfather once told me, on Facebook, you see the show. In your real life, you see the backstage. Because what those Insta guys don't show you is that between this picture and that picture, there's 15 minutes of going downhill that is a father of two toddlers, you make it three times. You go down with one, you go up and bring the other ones on your shoulders. And the younger one, which didn't want to leave the car, and then when we came back up, he didn't want to leave the boat and go back to the car, he objected the way terrible stews do. And the entire way looked and sounded like this. <laughs> so consider, consider this, there will be once a day, at least once a day, when you want to take the kids and basically ship them back to Israel to be with their, their grandparents. Now the difference between the bad parents and the good parents is not that you wanted to, because trust me you will, it's if you actually did. Hi, my name is Yaron, I'm a a board member and the founder of Opschool. Opschool is a non-profit organization. Thank you. And a lot of our, our graduates are actually here, which is awesome for everyone. Uh, we actually uh, train operation, uh, ops, uh, DevOps professionals. Uh, we are all volunteers. Uh, so if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to meet us outside. Since I'm a... Uh, uh, I'm not working in op school. I do have a, a proper job, and I'm a DevOps uh, engineer in Capitolis. Capitolis, in, uh, in the most basic words, we help uh, financial institutes reduce risk, and by that, actually making more money. But we're not in a banking conference, but in a DevOps conference. So this is a very nice place where I can actually implement everything that I teach in op school. So it's a great place to work, at least for me. For two years, uh, my wife and uh, four kids, together with me, we were traveling in the Far East. We started in Thailand. From there, we've been to Japan, and we've been to Vietnam. We planned on moving on after Vietnam to Laos, Cambodia, but then, then COVID. And two months became three, and three became four, and we ended up staying 18 months in Vietnam. Now, a lot of people, when they hear our story, they'll think, wow, guys, this is amazing. You lived a good life. Or, this has got to be for really wealthy people. How the hell did you do that? So I'm here to tell you, it's neither of those. It's basically living on the road. And a lot of families what, that we've talked to actually had kind of the same experience. When there was some trigger that actually led them into this trip. For me... It was April 2019. My wife and I were sitting on the couch, and then the news anchor said, our next prime minister would be Benjamin Netanyahu. Don't get off your seats. I'm not going to get political, because it's got nothing to do with my political beliefs. But there was a sense of anger. We were so polarized. There was such a nasty feeling, at least for me. Add to that that a good friend of my wife was diagnosed with cancer, and we just, we just needed a break. And we knew we needed, uh, uh, we needed to live life to the fullest, and we needed to do it now. The original plan was actually to go to Europe, travel, come every couple of months, to take some medication for my son. My son takes uh, uh, shots, uh, uh, say hi to the grandparents, high five, go take a taxi, go back to the airport. Did you pack by yourself? Yes, I did. Did anybody give you anything to pass? No, nobody. I'm asking because some things might look innocent, but I'm sure you've all been through that drill. Uh, uh, and 
And actually, what we found out is traveling in an RV in Europe is really, really complex. You gotta make all those decisions. Uh, uh, am I buying an RV? Am I renting one? Uh, if you want to buy one, you gotta, uh, you gotta open a company because you're, I'm not a European citizen. Uh, it's all those really, really complicated things that need to be done. And add to that, that I, had, I quit my job, I looked for another position, we had to sell all the stuff in the apartment. It was just, just too much. But then, I sat in a small coffee shop with a good friend of mine called Dolly, and Dolly said, so that make this decision now. And I said, what do you mean? I said, go to India. You gotta come back to Israel in three months. I had to come back to Israel in three months because of some wedding. And then during those three months, build your plan. India? India? My wife got more and more upset every time she said, India? I was promised Europe. How the hell did it become India? And I said, yeah, but Dolly, he said, Dolly, Shmer, Dolly, if Dolly wants to go to India, Dolly can go to India. I want to drink red wine and eat smelly cheese in Europe, not in India. But I felt that we had to do that. Europe was way above our heads. So I started sending her pictures of happy families in Goa. And she said, no, India, no. But you know what? I've heard that Kopangan is a great place to start. So let's go to Kopangan. Three months to the day after we made the decision, we were on an airplane going to Bangkok. So in case you find yourself in this kind of situation, this is what you need to do. The first thing is, that should be no surprise, you need to start your research. There are a lot of Facebook groups like uh, Digital Nobody Israel, or We Took the Red Pill, or Families on the Go, that you can actually go and, and get a lot of information about how to start your travel from there. There are blogs. There's a, a Hasidic family that actually travels the world for the last, I think, three years, and there's the blog that we wrote during our trip, Mishpacha Metelet Azipur Amiti, Traveling Family, the true story. So you can go and start looking at those uh, pages and see what you can do and what needs to be done. Start planning and preparing both your kids, your family, and your managers. Go to your manager and tell him, I want to leave and go on a trip in a year from today. If you're a valuable employee, and I'm sure since you're all you guys are in a DevOps conference, you're very much valuable. So I'm sure your manager, she would rather have you work remotely than not work at all. Uh, 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 start becoming light. Get rid of stuff. We're accumulating way too much stuff in our life. How many t-shirts do you need? You got more t-shirts in this conference alone than what you're going to need for the, la- for the next five years. So get rid of stuff. It's a very liberating feeling. And then start disconnecting from the grid. There's nothing more fulfilling than talking to the representative of the cable company and tell her, I don't need Channel 7 sport because I don't care. I'm leaving. Please, for the love of God, disconnect me. And you succeed. Last but not least, deal with your health. So uh, uh, a lot of times, you, you, you know, you got to do this root canal, you got to do this procedure that you postponed for the last few years because it's never the right time. Do it. Now is the time to do it before you start traveling. My recommendation is also, if you're going for a longer period, talk to an accountant that specializes in nomads because you can save a lot of money doing that. Family trips look something like this. It's divided to two parts. One part is the actual traveling. This is when you go from one place to another. Another part of it is called uh, nesting. Traveling part is actually what you came for. You go to Disney World, you go to Halong Bay, you go to all these really nice, beautiful places that you want to see during the trip. Nesting is where you actually settle down in one place, get a bit of sense of community. You, you start building relationships with other families in, your, in the same situations you are. The kids sometimes can go to school because some places actually have uh, uh, places that they can actually go to. It's either playgroups or schools for the older kids. And there, over there, you can actually start building relationships with other families who actually are in the same position as you are because it's not surprise. Most of the families do basically the same trip. We're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, 
So you actually start traveling the same way you did after the military service. When you travel in groups, but instead of groups of individuals, it's groups of families. The favorite way of traveling that we've found is road trips. What we do in road trips is actually we start by researching, look for nice places in the area, and we put dots anywhere or, or in all the places, and then we draw a line between all those nice places. Once you've done that, you commit to this and you don't change a thing, but the opposite. This is just a guideline for you. Start going on a trip. The most amazing things that you find on the road is the stuff that, which are not written anywhere, like this temple of, of everything. Uh, the entire temple was covered by umbrellas. Or a place, there's a restaurant the, uh, in, a, in the middle of the rice field where uh, we saw uh, a worker slamming rice stalks on the ground, separating the rice from the stalk. And actually, this is the first time my kids actually figured out that rice doesn't come from a plastic bag, but from actually something else. Obviously, you don't miss the must-haves. There's a reason that the must-haves are must -haves. They're amazing. This is, this is the Golden uh, Triangle, the, the place where Laos, Cambodia, uh, Laos, Myanmar, and uh, uh, Thailand yeah, meet. Go to Disney World in Japan. Go to Halong Bay. Again, there's a reason those masters are masters. But again, the most amazing thing is stuff that you don't plan. We got, we made friends with one of the owners of a hotel we stayed in, and he said he told us, you know what? I'm getting married in a couple of weeks. Would you mind coming? So we came back for his wedding. We stayed for three days. It's a Vietnamese wedding, so it's three days where you constantly toxic intoxicated. It's basically beer, 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 karaoke. And I told him, I'm too drunk to drive. He said, no worries, let's take the motorcycles. Imagine this, you're driving a car, nine hours, nine hours, and that's before, dad, I need to go to the toilet, dad, he, I hit him, dad, he did this to me. The entire time, the entire time, you hear this in the background. Do take into consideration. Please make it silent. <laughs> Do take into consideration that your soundtrack of your trip will be defined by the youngest uh, kid in the car, and there's nothing you can do about it. So I want to talk a bit about walking while you're traveling. So it's very cool to walk from a mountaintop or from the beach or from a restaurant, but uh, Personally, I really need quiet places. So a lot of coffee shops actually play music. So I found that the best place to walk for me was actually in hotels, and where it's a bit more quieter. Or I would walk from, again, some mountaintop, and I actually used my uh, cellular uh, data for data. I never found any place in the Far East, and I'm talking about those three places, where I didn't have data. Uh, be a part of the team. By being a part of the team, I mean your manager knows that you are remotely. The manager knows that you work in Vietnam, even though he tells, keep telling you that you work from Thailand. Trust me, it happened to me all the time. Yeah, you are from Thailand. No, no, I'm actually I've been in Vietnam for a year now. But you need to make him feel as if you are part of the team, as if despite the fact that you are on another continent, you are there, and you do this by being extra responsive. By being extra responsive means you, you need to reply almost instantly. So when somebody tells you something, you can reply immediately saying, yes, I heard you, acknowledge, I know that you're there. It doesn't mean you have to fix everything at the same spot. You can tell them, look, I've heard you, I'm going to address this on Monday. It's going to keep everybody calm. For a year, people had no idea that I'm working two days a week and not in a full-time job. Uh, plan your work days with your manager. Uh, because during, if you're working part-time, two days a week, during those two days, you want your manager to be extra responsive to you. So this way, you don't delay stuff, because if, if there's a gap and say, oh, I need to do this, and there's a week goes by without it being fixed. Last but not least, uh, uh, invest in relationships, because at the end of the day, we're not machines. We are humans, despite being uh, DevOps operator <laughs> engineers, uh, and so I used to uh, join 
uh, uh, happy hour meetings, even though it was my midnight. I every week I enjoyed them because when they put a face to the name, it's a lot easier to say, ah, oh, okay, you know, he's, something goes wrong. I, I'm going to give him, I'm going to cut him slack. So what we haven't had time to talk about is homeschooling, which is a huge subject. How do you create a home where there's no home? Because you keep traveling all the time. Uh, uh, the benefits of living in a, in a minimalistic uh, life, and how do you keep your identity in a, in a multicultural world, which is, which is a challenge. I'm going to leave you with a, a few... Um, um, few recommendations. One, don't use filters. Not on your camera, not in your life. Be authentic. There's nothing like being authentic. The world is beautiful is enough. Just by being, it's the, you know, the world, it's great. Just take photos as they are. Number two, write. Document and process because when, and process what you've done. Because when you write something, you go, you process it in your head. And then when you read it a year later, you relive it. And it's a great thing to do. Don't, uh, uh, my friend told me that, don't treat your uh, decisions as if they were vows. So if you made a decision to go somewhere and it doesn't work out, it's fine. Make another decision. I'm not saying don't make an effort. We came to the lab, we stayed there for a week. The entire week was pouring rain. If anybody of you, uh, of you have been uh, in such areas like Vietnam, when it rains, it's just basically like God is taking buckets of water and just pouring them on you. Just imagine one week of that. But we, we stayed that week and it actually turned uh, for another month in the most beautiful place we've, I've ever been to. The last thing is this. Uh, people take shortcuts, take long cuts. Instead of going from point A to point B directly, take a long cut. Go and find, because the things you find all the way are amazing, and as those are the things which you remember probably for the rest of your life. If you're wondering what our family uh, carries when they travel, this is uh, all our gear. Um, and you can uh, read more in our website. Uh, on, on Facebook and thank you if you want to talk to me about science.